then after Crush Groove came the house party. And the house party actually they wanted full force but only because of Crush Groove, my two brothers was in that. Because in the script, when we read the script they they described the bullies that was in the house party and they said, uh, kid and play is accosted by three bullies with droopy jerry curls, bowling ball muscles. Or like full force. So we were the first ones to try out for those parts, and we got it. And House Party has been a blessing, was a blessing, still is a blessing, because the Hudlin brothers gave us a chance to create, and they let us uh, do our own thing with House Party. Mm-hmm. I mean, the way the script was, everything that you've seen us do in House Party was not in the script. The script was very regular. He wasn't really having that much lines, but what happened is I told my brothers, I said, listen, I wasn't in crush group with y'all. And what y'all did was okay. But in House Party, we got to be bullies with personality. Because in the script, it only had us grunting and groaning and, come here, let's go. I said, we got to make more of this. So what we would do is go into our hotel rooms, and I, every scene that we were in, I rewrote those scenes. I would rewrite them, and I would make up our own lines. Then I said, listen, before we do this, we're going to show the Hudlin brothers you know, we'll let them come up in our cabin. If they like what we did, then cool. If they don't like it, then we'll go back to the script. So I didn't think it hurt to try. Mm-hmm. You know, everything that I did in House Party, I made up myself. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of times, a lot of people, you know, people would come up to us like, you know, Jamie Foxx when we came up with House Party, even Eddie Murphy and Arsenio Hall and all those people, they were shocked at our performances. You know, and Eddie and Arsenio were like, man, Lou, you did a great job because they were surprised at me. My friends that know me in real life, they know how crazy I am. But a lot of folks didn't. Like, I wanted to make up the voice with a high-pitched voice that talk like this. I made up, I'm a kick your freaking in. I made that up. I also made up, I smell, I smell, I smell. And you know it comes after that. Mm-hmm, so of course. I, I made up all of those, and we were able to show the Hudlin brothers what we wanted to do. We changed up the lines for my brothers. And every scene that we were in, the Hudlin brothers always said, beautiful, good, do that. They were so happy, you know, so... And why I say House Party continues to be a blessing is because hopefully we'll be doing a new movie called Hot School Party. It's like the old school against the new school. It should be really hot. But, um, still a blessing because still today, you know, I can't go nowhere without, you know, I'm a kick your freaking in. Everybody remembers that. Mm-hmm. Of you know? course. So it's, all, it's all good. And it's fun, man. It's been a blessing. Mm-hmm. Who doesn't remember House Party? Now, tell me about you guys working with Cheryl Pepsi Riley, who was known for the single Thank You For My Child. I believe that was the name of it, or um, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, Cheryl Pepsi Riley. What were you asking? Um, what was the name of, I think, I can't recall the name of the song. It's like, Thank You For Being My Child, or. Oh, no, 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 no. Thanks for my child. That was her first single. Okay. It went on. It went on to number uh, number one record, a big number one record. And it was a song about single mothers, you know, dealing with you know when the father leaves you and you're there by yourself. She did. The women are there by themselves to raise a child. You know, the guy doesn't have responsibility, which is kind of whack. Because you know, if you want to put it in, then you got to stick it in. You know, stick stick in there. That's what I mean. Not sexually, but just on the on the man to be a real man. Because you know. It, it, it's easy to make a baby, but it really takes a real man to be a father. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? True. So thanks to my child was a was a um, big hit for Cheryl Pepsi Riley, and and um, Full Force wrote that. But you know, like I said, you know, I wrote that one. But we always say Full Force because all for one, one for all. It's six members in Full Force, and we we've been splitting our money six ways for so long. Mm-hmm. And like, if I write a song, it'll stay written by Full Force. It's People write a song, oh for us. Three people, oh for us. That's how we've been rolling. Def- you know? Definitely that. And what was it like working with Backstreet Boys and NSYNC doing that whole Transcon camp? I believe you guys did All I Have to Give for Backstreet Boys, and it was a big hit for them. It was great to work with, with all of them. I mean, Backstreet Boys, All I Have to Give was a song that Baby Jerry spearheaded uh, from Full Force. And, and when I had a meeting with Jive Records, they, they showed us Backstreet Boys. and. I came and showed the video to the guys, and Jerry said, Ooh, you know, I might have a song that might be good. And he started singing it, and I kissed him. I said, Jerry, I love you. And he's my cousin, so I can kiss him. I said, Jerry, I love you. That's a smash. And it was a big smash. It was one of their biggest hits. And then we went on and worked with uh, NSYNC, which we produced and wrote some songs that wasn't actually released. But they used to perform them on their concerts all the time. Ricky Spears, they 
Then we worked with a, a white group called LFO. Um, and all these white pop groups, Full Force was writing and producing for. And people were so surprised, you know? Mm -hmm. um, it was all good. Yeah, because I was like, All I Have to Give definitely had that R&B sound. And now you guys did did work with this Latino group called the Barrio Boys. Right, right. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, they were definitely, you know, Latin cats doing the whole R&B thing. And they definitely were ahead of their time in terms of the boy band explosion and the Latin explosion here in the States. Right. But they were definitely very talented, very talented guys. Now, um, what is Full Force doing nowadays? Well, right now, we're in the studio cultivating. Like I said before, we got out of the studio like a couple of weeks ago with Akon and his girl group for Brick and Lace. And right now... It's possible that we might be doing a joint with Miss Elliott, you know, but right now we're cultivating a lot of new acts right now. That's what we always love. Like when, back in the day when we, we cultivated UCFO, we cultivated the Real Rock Band, we cultivated Lisa Lisa and Pearl Jam. These are acts that we brought up and cultivated. We've had a girl group in the early 90s for ex girlfriend that had a top 10 record. We wrote and produced that too. So we're still cultivating, you know. You're the one for me, I believe, was the single by ex girlfriend, right? Right, right, right. Yeah, actually, I have that joint on a CD. I actually going to have to pop a listen to it after I get off of here, you know what I mean? But like, I'm a big Full Force fan, you know, all in my mind. I still got vinyl records of the debut and Guess Who's Coming to the Crib with Love is for Suckers. Wow, thanks, man. Yeah. I still got them, too. I got a lot of them. Yeah, courtesy of, no. my, courtesy of my aunt down in South Carolina, they were just sitting there in the garage. I was like, give me those. Yeah, man. You know what we did? When we did All in My Mind, that was a, a huge record for Full Force. That was a top 10 record for us. We also did like a different, like a bunch of radio versions, meaning we would say the names of the radio jocks and everything like that, and then just release the record, you know, right before the song starts. We always did a lot of drops like that. Definitely did. And uh, what was, who came up with e -Croft? He was in the Ain't My Type of Hype video. Yeah, e -Croft is a little cartoon character, like a Space Age cartoon character. And they, uh, my brother B Fine came up with that idea, with the whole e -Croft thing. Now, do you still keep in touch with Kid and Play? Yeah, still keep in touch with both of them. In fact, I was in Atlanta, Georgia like some months ago. We did this um, hip-hop film festival, and me and Play, along with Yo-Yo, hosted it, and it was hot. Yo-Yo, for all you people that don't know out there, West Coast female rapper, you can't play with my Yo-Yo shoes on the Can't album. play with my Yo-Yo. Don't it's try right. to play me out. Good, too. Uh, of course, with those, with those pretty eyes. Now, are you guys still amazed that the longevity of Full Force and people my age, like, Yo, you know, Full Force is like the joint. You know, House Party pretty much has helped cement you guys' legacy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny because the, the, the um, old heads, the old school heads, they know us for our music and the Full Force joint. But the young kids, a lot of them that wasn't around when we came out, they all, even even some kids that wasn't even born in 1991, because that's when House Party came out, they all know House Party because House Party continues to still play like on cable and everything. Everybody knows that. They know my line. I'm a kick your fiction. Everybody knows that. And um, it's, that's why I say House Party is still a blessing. Mm -hmm. Because they don't remember kids like the, the old heads like, oh, they're junior. You don't know who that is? Go make no full ass. They full force. You don't know full force? And they go, oh, I don't know, Dad, but uh, you don't remember House Party? Oh yeah, I remember them house lines. That's when they remember. But it's all good to us. Yeah, that de definitely that right there. And uh, what do you feel about the current state of R and B music today, as compared to you know the mid eighties, early eighties? Well, I always say there's nothing like true school. Back in the eighties, that's when music was music. And that, I mean, they got some good songs and stuff like that. But I'm talking about the pure, the pure soul R and B. You had a lot of great hits and a lot of great people doing the damn thing. You know, now, I mean, you know, from back in the days, it's dramatic, Black and Beverly and Maze and, you know, all them groups. I mean, it's a shame because now you don't even got black bands that's out doing latest records. You got the white bands still doing their thing, but the black bands, nope. I just think it's a thing where rock music, they have a sense of their roots where R&B is kind of like you don't really have that same appreciation of, like, a troop, a full force guy, Tony, 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 or New Edition. Yeah, well, well, yeah, we're good friends with Teddy Riley. We worked together with him when we did a project from Monifa and New Edition. But, you know, once again, Teddy always looked up to us, too, Teddy Riley. And he always told us that he, um, we were a big influence. Because we came out before him, and, you know, we looked at ourselves as the, as the original hip-hop vocal band right. before anybody, you know? And I was, um, was going to bring this up, too. So you guys were kind of like doing the hip-hop and R&B thing before Teddy and New 